so thankful for the ministry of Brother Kerry Jones this weekend. We've had some great services, amen, some turning points for us as a body, been able to minister to other pastors as they came through, amen. God is doing great things, and we're so thankful. Every night has been, a, every night and every day has kind of had a different mix of people, and the Lord knows exactly what He is doing. And so I am thankful Brother Jones is here. I feel there's a prophetic release coming today with more direction. And I've told him over and over again, just obey the Holy Ghost. Obey the Holy Ghost. If he feels to prophesy, prophesy. Amen. We believe in the gifts of the Spirit because the truth of the matter is, man by himself is no good. And the only way we're going to be an oracle of God is to be obedient to God. And be an echo from heaven. Would you stretch your hands this way one more time and ask the Lord to bless Brother Jones as he comes to bring the word and anoint your ears to hear it in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, we can do a little bit of that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's do that one more time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you thankful to be in God's house on a Sunday morning? Thank you, Jesus. You can go ahead and be seated. I know you've been standing for a while. I want to give honor to the pastor, the angel of this house, Pastor Palmer. Um, thankful that he... Um, allowed me to come this weekend. I believe God has done some things behind the scenes, and um, God is continuing to work. God is continuing to touch, and God is continuing to direct this church through a very, <clears throat> I feel, unique season, um, a very unique season. I I know that there is some weariness and some tiredness. A lot of you have been here this weekend and have given a lot um, for this revival. And um, God doesn't overlook our efforts that we give to the kingdom. God never overlooks it. But a lot of times we don't see the results immediately. And so with that being said, we've got to understand that God does things in his own timing. But God always does everything well. He does everything well. Don't get weary in the process. Don't get frustrated in the process. I know I'm not screaming, but I'm, I'm slowly getting into what I feel for today. Don't get weary in the process. Don't get weary in the journey. Don't get weary and frustrated that things don't happen in the time frame that you have or you have set because God knows exactly what he's doing. I'm going to tell somebody today, you've got to trust God. you got to trust God that he's going to make ends meet. you got to trust God that he knows what he's doing. This situation, whatever situation you are facing, is not the first time God has been having to work in the darkness, you may not see that God is working, but he's working. And I know I'm not yelling. I know I'm not screaming, but I'm telling you, there is a ministering spirit today in the house. And God wants to do a work. I do feel that God has directed me. I, I, I felt to preach one thing, and the more I prayed this morning, the more I felt to preach this to you, and I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't know if it's more for this church or the spirit realm, what I feel to preach today, but I do feel like there's some type of release going to come forth today, some type of release. Uh, like I said, it's been an honor to be with you guys. Last night, several of us went to Huddle House, and I had a great time. I do feel the Lord gave me some type of challenge to give to this church. I do feel such a connection 
in the spirit with this church. I don't know what the future holds. I don't know exactly how God's going to orchestrate it, but I do feel something coming. And with that feeling, I feel a challenge to challenge some of you young marrieds and some of you hyphen to think outside of the box. As I was mingling with some of you last night, I felt the Lord impress me. What would happen in this area, in this region, when you guys come together? Because I feel such a unity, a togetherness. What would happen if you took that same group and started a Bible study in a public setting? In a public setting where you're having fun and you incorporate the Word of God and you take your Bibles into a public setting, you start talking about the book of Acts. And I believe that there's coming a drawing. If, if you guys will hear what I'm saying to you right now and take the challenge and you get this word outside of these four walls, there's a revival coming. The Bible talks about that most of Jesus' miracles didn't happen in the temple. It happened on the streets. So I believe, and I just felt that in my spirit, that if you guys could take the togetherness that you already have and put the word of God with it and start taking it outside of these four walls, God's going to start meeting you and you're going to start drawing people from your job, start drawing people, family members into this house. Ah, thank you, Jesus. If you have your Bibles, 1 Samuel chapter 1, if you have your Bibles, you can stay seated. I know you've been standing for a while. 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 1, I do feel directed of the Holy Ghost. This is going to be a little different today, but I just got to obey what I feel. 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 1, now there was a certain man of Ramatham Zophim of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, and the son of Zoph. An Ephrathite, and he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina, and Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Everybody say, no children. And this man went up out of the city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord, but the Lord, not the devil, but the Lord had shut up her womb. But the Lord has shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret because the Lord has shut up her womb. What do you do when God is the reason for what you're feeling? Hmm. What do you do when God is the reason why you're in this season? Whew. Today I want to preach to you today. I've, I've only preached this one time. Barren to be broken. Barren to be broken. Barren to be broken. Now, you got to understand that in biblical times, uh, women were seen a little different. Women were seen as property. Women were seen as a means to continue a lineage. Now, today, women hold such a valuable part of society, but it was not that way in biblical times. If you ever studied the Bible, you know that there is a lot of times that when a man wanted a woman, he would trade his livestock. He would trade cows and horses for that woman because women were seen as property. And a lot of times... Back in biblical times, if a woman was not able to give birth to a child, they would automatically consider something is wrong with her. 
they would think something, some type of sin, something has caused her womb to be shut. And so immediately, a woman back in biblical times, if she was not able to bear children, she was seen as nothing. She was seen as someone that could not give her husband what he wanted, which was a man-child. And the reason for men-child or men-children is to continue the lineage, to continue the name. And if they weren't able to give that to the man, she was seen as a failure. And so we pick up knowing that in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Now, there's this man called Elkanah, and he, the Bible says that he has two wives. I know I'm going slow, but I'm going somewhere. He had two wives. One was named Hannah, and the other was named Penina. The meaning of Hannah's name is grace or favor. Penina's name means jewel. <laughs> so the meaning of Hannah was something that you could not see, grace or favor. But for Penina, her name is jewel, something that when put in light, can be seen, and it's so beautiful on the outside. And knowing this, he has two wives. One of them was able to bear children. The other one was barren. Now, keep in mind what I said earlier, that women, if they could not bear children, something was wrong. Something is off with her. Something, the fact that she isn't able to give Elkanah what he wants, which is men, children, if she isn't able to give him that, she is seemingly wrong. Something's wrong. And so the Bible says that this man goes up yearly to worship and to sacrifice, and when he does, he takes both of his wives with him. And the Bible says that he gives to Penina a portion, but to Hannah he gives a worthy portion. He gives Hannah more, but she's not able to give him anything in return. I wonder what's going through the mind of Hannah when she sees them going up to sacrifice, but Penina has her children. And Elkanah is playing with her kids, but she doesn't have anything to offer. I wonder what's going through the mind of Hannah. I wonder if she was asking herself, God, what's wrong with me? God, what is the problem with me? Why can't I give my husband what he wants? But it's, 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 it's hard when you know that God is the reason why you're barren. It's hard to fathom in a situation in a time where you're not able to have children and you know God is behind this. And so, verse 5, but unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion for he loved Hannah. <laughs> but the Lord has shut up her womb. So when it comes to sacrifice, Elkanah gave Hannah more than Penina because he loved her. But just because you're favored doesn't mean that you don't go through things. Just because God loves you doesn't mean that you can't go through trials. And in verse 6, the Bible says, And her adversary also provoked her sore to make her fret because the Lord, not the devil, the Lord shut up her womb. What do you do when you come to church and you know that God has put you in this season? Not the devil. <laughs> it's God that's working this. And so, I can see as they're going up, stay with me, church. I'm telling you, I got a word for you guys. And so, I can see as they're going up and Penina is just messing with Hannah. Where's your kids at? Why can't you have kids? I've gave, given Elkanah three or four kids at this time. Where's your kids at? 
And the Bible says that she provokes her so much that it's making Hannah look at herself and say, what's wrong with me? You don't think the enemy comes to church with people? Oh, he does. He shows up right on your shoulder. Says, you better not worship today. You're not good enough. You better not lift your hands. I know what you did last night. I know the addictions you have behind closed doors. You better not worship. And the adversary shows up in a place of sacrifice and provokes her. Why can't you have this? Why aren't you doing this? What's wrong with this church? Why is other churches having revival and it seems like God has taken everybody away from us? Why does it seem like we pray and answers are just hitting the ceiling and coming back down? Why is it that we fast but nothing's being broken? Why is it that people are not receiving the Holy Ghost? What's wrong with me? It's a different story when you can come in and you're in a season and you know you're in a season. But when God says, I'm causing this. How do you go to God in prayer and you know he's the reason why this is going on? It's hard to fathom God, but you got to remember that the Bible says that his ways are above our ways. And his thoughts are above our thoughts. We think Jesus should operate or God should operate a certain way. He says, no, I don't operate in the way that you think because I'm working from the end to the beginning. See, right now, I just felt my help just show up right now. Some of you don't understand the season that you're in. And God's saying, you don't understand the right now, but I'm working in your future. See, you may not understand the right now. You don't understand the right now, but I'm already working in your future because I'm in the end working. I'm in the end working, but you got to understand that I'm causing this, but there is an expected end that I'm bringing you to. And so this, this adversary is provoking her, and I wonder how many times she goes to prayer and saying, God, why can I have? Why am I not being fruitful? What is it, God? And I can see his hand saying, okay, enough's enough. I've got to get to a place where I start bearing children. Verse 9, something shifts. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli, the priest, sat upon a seat by a post in the temple. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the afflictions of thy handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but wilt give unto thine handmaid a man child, I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. So let me break this down to you. That Hannah got so desperate for God to do something in her life that she goes into the temple. But this is what some of you don't realize. You may know what goes through some people's lives at home, but you don't really know. Because there's people in this house right now that you're going and dealing with things in your house that you ain't told nobody. You're dealing with things in your mind and your spirit that you ain't told nobody. And you come into church, and you lift your hands, and you worship God. But yet, you go back home, and you're so desperate for a change. You're so desperate for something to break. Woo, man, I know I'm in the Holy Ghost today. And so we go into the temple, and we're saying, God, something has to break today. Oh, fitting that they ended with that song. Something has to break. Something has to shift. 
You see Hannah with her feeble hands and she has worship and lifted and saying, God, if you'll answer this prayer, I'll give you from my nothing. <laughs> God, I don't have much to offer because I'm barren and people think something's wrong with me. But if you give me a man child, I'll take from my nothingness. If you'll give me a man child, if you'll give me what I've been praying for, I will in return give you that man child back. If you'll hear my prayer. What a prayer to pray. When you go to God and say, God, I haven't seen the fulfillment of this. But if you'll give it to me, I promise you, I'll give it right back to you. For years, she's wanting to have a baby. No, some of you ain't getting what I'm saying right now. For years, she's been trying to have a kid. And she goes to God and said, God, if you'll give me what I've been asking for, what I've been waiting for for years, I promise I'll take it right back to you and give it right back to you. How desperate do you have to be that you're saying, God, what I've been praying for, if you'll give it to me, I promise I'll give it right back to you. That's how desperate Hannah was. So desperate. And the Bible says that she comes into the temple, she prays this prayer. And Eli, the Bible says, is by a post. And the prophet's just sitting there watching her. Now listen, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. The prophet's sitting there watching her. And the Bible goes on to say that she was in bitterness of her heart because she wanted something to happen so bad. She wanted something to change so bad that she wasn't even saying words out of her mouth. She wanted something to shift so bad. She had given all to God. And Eli the prophet is just sitting there watching her. I wonder if Eli was thinking, man, this lady's crazy. She's so crazy. How many of us, we watch other people not knowing what they're going through. Judging a book by its cover. Why are they not worshiping? Why are they not praising? Have you ever thought that maybe they're going through something that they don't know how they're going to get out of it? Maybe there's some people under the sound of my voice that get on the platform and sing that are dealing with emotional issues. And we can't put two and two together. Why they won't break through in worship. Why they won't break through in praise. Maybe they're barren. I'm telling you, I feel a deep, sovereign move of the Spirit wanting to happen this morning. The Bible says that he's just standing there by the post watching her. And the Bible says that he marked her mouth. There are some translations that say that he slapped her because he was judging her by the outward appearance that she's drunk. So she goes to the prophet and says, no, -uh, I'm not drunk. Nothing's wrong with me. I've just given God everything. What do you do when you've given God everything? And you have nothing to show for it. God, I've obeyed you. And it seems like everything, it's like you got holes in your pocket. Things are dropping. Things are falling. Things are not happening like you wanted it to. It's like, God, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> she tells the prophet, I just want. I just want, I just want God to answer my prayer. 
It's not something that I'm at. I'm not asking for a great thing. I just want God to answer me. In verse 14, everybody listen. I'm, I'm, I'm hurrying. Verse 14, and Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken here to. So she goes to the pastor and says, I have given him everything, and now I'm frustrated because I haven't had a baby yet. She said, no, I haven't drunk anything. I haven't drunk anything. Nothing's wrong with me. I'm just so desperate for God to answer a prayer. Somebody in this house, you're so desperate for God to start working in your family. So desperate for God to start working in your church. It seems like God is a million miles away. Eli answered and said, go in peace. And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And he said, let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat. Her countenance was no more sad. The preacher started feeling the burden of a mama that wanted a baby so bad. But God, why won't you let Hannah have her child? Because you got to ask questions when you read the Word of God. Why? Why are you causing her to go through a season where she's literally pouring out everything to you? And it seems like you're still not answering her prayers. I'm almost done. I'm closer to being done than what you realize. This is the reason why. Because God knew what was coming forth out of that nothing. No, no, no. Some of you didn't hear what I just said. God knew what was coming forth out of that barren womb. There's something coming forth out of that barrenness that you're dealing with right now. You can't see it because God operates from the end to the beginning. So he sees that out of that barrenness is coming a prophet. Out of your barrenness, out of your nothingness, is coming a prophet named Samuel. I feel something prophetic coming over me for this church. Out of your barrenness is coming something that is greater than you've ever imagined before. But do you know when it all shifted? Listen to me. I feel such an anointing on me today. Do you know when it all shifted? When she made a vow. Saying, God, if you'll give me a boy, I'll give him right back to you. And when she made the vow, God said, okay, now I'm going to start working on your behalf. God, why are you allowing me not to have a child? I'll tell you this. Because God knew what was coming forth. Now listen, God knew that a prophet was coming out of her nothingness. So in order for the prophet to come out of her nothingness, she had to be willing to give things up so that a prophet could be born. Because God knew that out of our nothingness was coming something great. To, but when you want to be something great for God, it's sacrifice has to take place. So as God is looking from the end to her, her situation in the temple, God's saying, okay, I know there's a prophet coming out of your womb. But in order for that prophet to come out of that womb, you got to start consecrating yourself. Because he's not just going to be another boy. 
He's not just going to be another kid that walks around. That's going to be the prophet that anoints David to be king. The purpose of the Lord. The purpose of the barrenness is so you, Hannah, can first be broken so that a prophet can be born. There's a purpose for this barrenness. It's so that you'll be broken and in the brokenness can come for the prophet. reason why this church has went through what it's went through. Because God is requiring a brokenness. Something is coming forth. Out of the brokenness. And when you decide, God, I want a baby so bad. And you say, God, I'm willing to throw whatever you want on the altar. I'll give you my phone. I'll give you my apps. I'll fast two times a week in order to have something great come forth. like the barren season <laughs> but God will let us stay there as long as it takes us to get to a place where we surrender say God I'll give you my nothing I'll give you my inadequacies I'll give you my struggles I'll give you my issues if you'll give me a baby if you'll give me a baby speak to me. This morning, while I was standing over there, I'm usually more exuberant in my praise and my worship, but today I was just, God, help me to relate this to this church like you want me to relay it to them. Help me to relay it to them. God saying, if you get sick and tired of being buried, using this barrenness to break this church so that something can break forth. I felt the Holy Ghost speak to me. I don't know what he did. I felt the Holy Ghost speak to me while I was standing over there. It's like I saw that today, I know there's some visitors that are not here. Those people I was hoping would be here today that are not here today. But I felt like the Lord showed me that a page was turning in this church's history. And a page was turning. <laughs> For what purpose? <laughs> because somebody today is going to make a decision. God, in this barren season, where I feel like nothing's coming forth. <laughs> and I'm barren. But God is using this for me to be broken. Let's stand. I want everybody to listen to me right now. We are, I'm telling you, we are in such a deep, deep moving of the Spirit right now. God's going to start calling you. And what's going to happen is God's going to start dealing with some of you. And when he starts dealing with you, you're going to realize, I can't be just like any other young married couple. I can't be just like any other young person. In this season, God's calling me to a brokenness. Because something's going to come forth out of this brokenness. You don't realize how great something is. I don't think some of you realize how great something's about to happen in this region. I've never been to this church before, but I know what I feel in the Holy Ghost is something's about to shift. I 
telling you, I don't just say stuff like I did today. I'm really challenging you guys to start a Bible study in a public setting. Because you're saying, God, I want babies. I want babies. God's going to give you contacts with people. And they're going to be a key to getting people into this church. I'm prophesying to you right now. But you got to be open and say, God, I want it so bad. And whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I'll give it. I don't think some of you realize the ministry and the potential that you have. I don't believe some of you ladies realize the places in prayer God wants to take you. Intercession, children's ministry. I see a children's revival coming to this church. I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost right now, I feel something on me right now. I feel a children's revival coming in this church, and there's going to be birth when some of you say, God, I want babies, and whatever you ask of me, I'll give it to you. You don't think the barrenness has a purpose? Oh, it does. Out of her barrenness came the vow of her brokenness. Out of her brokenness came the prophet Samuel. Out of Samuel, listen to me. I want everybody to look at me and listen to what I'm about to say. Out of Samuel came Saul, but also came David. And out of David, out of David came Jesus Christ. Out of David came Jesus. Out of this, what good can come out of this spirit? Jesus himself. I'm telling you, I feel such a drawing of God's spirit right now. Everybody look at me. I'm, I'm, I just want him. I don't want no other musicians, no singers. I just want you to stay, stay here. How many of you are really serious about giving God everything? I want you to raise your hand.